Ladies and gents, I'm Rusu Ju Reaction and this is Geoengineering, a horrible idea we might have to do by the channel Cos Gazard in a nutshell. By the end of the 21st century, humanity is becoming desperate. Decades of heat wave and droughts have led to unusually poor harvest. Damn. Yeah, also there was you know wildfires and increasing too. While the you know warming oceans yield fewer fish each year, isn't there a you know warning that you know fish are go going to be extinct? People won't be able to fish pretty soon. Yeah, it's just effed up. In the tropical zones, millions suffer from famine. Resources wars have made millions more flee to the north. Damn. As things quickly get worse in an act of desperation, the world's governments decide to enact an emergency plan. Yeah. It is far from certain that a grim scenario like this will play out. But the failure of world leaders to effectively address climate change makes it far from impossible. So in the near future, it might become necessary to try something radical to slow down rapid climate change geoengineering inventions to massive in a scale that they might undo centuries of human behavior or make everything much worse there you go what is geoengineering is it really an option what if it goes wrong yeah that's the thing isn't it whenever we think about any radical uh, ideas when it comes to things like this there's always this fear like everything might you know become awesome or everything could get millions of times worse that's the thing with geoengineering when it comes to our planet, our planet, you know, works uh, in some kind of a cycle that is just too complex. And I've, I, I always have this feeling like if we try to screw with that by geoengineering somewhat, we will start a chain of event that will be, you know, change, uh, I guess, our planet in a way that it will cause issue along the way. And all we'll be able to do is put bandits or, or things when it arises. So if we fuck something up, the great cycle of our planet might screw up. Yeah, there will be new problems arising every hundred years. We put bandit over that. Then the new problems will arise every thousand years and the cycle will continue. That's the fear I have. But I guess there's no much of choice. We have to do something since, you know, it's really, really late. And climate change is becoming an issue in just a matter of decades. In one or two decades, it'd be way too, too late. And that's a very close timeline comparing the scale of things so we have to do something about geoengineering i feel like you know to uh, some kind of a mirror dome I feel th that's way too i guess extreme i don't know how we could pull that off knowing the planet is way too big so putting a massive uh, you know shield mirror shield in on the outside of the uh, planet is uh, it's weird to think but i guess that could work you know stopping uh, sun rays from reaching the planet at that intensity so it doesn't warm it up i don't know because this is going to tell us, uh, you know, how it's how we can stop it with many ideas. It's going to be fun. I wrote to quite a few because I have videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the class. There's a playlist I've read for it. Check out the playlist too, like Real Life Lore, CGP Grey, Internet Historian, uh, Ole Sarcastic Production. And yeah, let's watch this one. By the end of the 21st century, humanity is becoming desperate. Decades of heat waves and droughts have led to unusually poor harvests, while the warming oceans yield fewer fish each year. In the tropical zones, millions suffer from famines and resource wars have made millions more flee to the north. As things quickly get worse, in an act of desperation, the world's governments decide to enact an emergency plan. It's far from certain that a grim scenario like this will play out, but the failure of world leaders to effectively address climate change makes it far from impossible. So, in the near future, it might become necessary to try something radical to slow down rapid climate change geoengineering. Interventions so massive in scale that they might undo centuries of human behavior or make everything much worse. What is geoengineering? Is it really an option? And what if it goes wrong? Geoengineering methods vary from fantastic ones like constructing giant light sails in space to seeding clouds with salt or wilder ones like fertilizing literally put our umbrella on top <laughs> in the oceans with iron to speed up the growth of trillions of algae cells. In this video, we'll focus on an intervention we could see during our lifetimes, stratospheric aerosol injection. A clunky term that means spraying stuff very high up in the atmosphere to keep the sun away keeping the sun away co2 doesn't heat up the planet on its own almost all of the energy i mean yeah you could block it like that right i mean yeah why put a massive mirror on top and you can just do that 
Hmm, that is something. G on Earth comes from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. About 71% of this energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface and atmosphere. This absorbed energy is emitted again as infrared radiation. And CO2 is able to trap this infrared radiation and keep it in the atmosphere for a while. You can compare this effect with snuggling under a blanket in the morning. Even in a really cold room, your body emits infrared radiation and the air between your body and the blanket traps it and creates a warm and comfy feeling. So one way to cool down the planet would be to prevent energy from getting trapped under our planet blanket, which is already happening naturally. About 29% of the solar radiation hitting Earth is reflected back to space by bright surfaces like ice, deserts, snow or clouds. More reflection, less energy, less warming. We can look at nature for inspiration. Specifically, the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption, the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Aside from massive devastation and almost 900 dead, scientists noted its strong impact on the global climate. The explosion ejected millions of tons of particles and gas as high as the stratosphere, which hung around there for a while. The stuff that's interesting for geoengineering is sulfur dioxide, a nasty-smelling and invisible gas. High in the atmosphere, it produced a haze of sulfuric acid droplets that mixed with water and created giant veils. These veils reduced the sunlight reaching Earth's surface by roughly 1%. Global average temperatures dropped by 0.5 degrees Celsius. It took three years until this cooling effect had stopped. Damn. Humans could imitate this process by injecting sulfur particles directly into the stratosphere. Sulfur in stratosphere. I mean, yeah, they'll they work on it. Just, you know, if, uh, goal is to stop sunlight from reaching, uh, the, you know, surface as much as we can. But the, this has no issue side effect. If that's the case, why are we not doing it? I mean, this feels like achievable even 50 years ago. I mean, just take a plane, you know, go there in the stratosphere and just, you know, put sulfur there. Why not? According to some scientists, this might be surprisingly easy to do and we don't even need a lot of new technology for it. Yeah, even the balloons, According to one study, it also might be pretty cheap compared with the costs of rapid climate change. A small fleet of specialized aircraft could ascend once a year and distribute aerosols along the equator from where they would be spread around the world. Projections assume that injecting between 5 and 8 megatons of material per year would reflect enough sunlight to slow down or even stop global warming, giving us precious time to transition away from fossil fuels. Unfortunately, there might be a few unhappy side effects. Acid there are rain. a number of potential issues with aerosol injections. Rainfall patterns could change, which could negatively affect agriculture and cause famine. Billions of people could be affected in the worst case. Also, after the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption, the acid water veils not only cooled down the surface, they also heated up the stratosphere. As it turns out, acid is bad for the ozone layer, and the ozone hole over Antarctica was the largest it has ever been. Oh, okay. Injecting sulfur. I thought there, there wouldn't be an acid rain somehow, but no, that makes sense. Sulfur and that acid rain would happen, obviously, that would hurt our crops and things, but apparently it would hurt ozone layer too. That's why people haven't done this, because, yeah, it's not really a good thing to do. For particles over decades could have a similar effect. Scientists have already suggested using a combination of different minerals that might have much less harmful effects on the ozone layer, but more research and experiments need to be done to make sure this could work. But even if we don't damage the ozone layer, there are other risks. Politicians and industry might use the cooling effect as an excuse to delay the switch to a carbon-neutral economy. Even if geoengineering slows down global warming, humanity is still adding extra CO2 to the atmosphere. More CO2 in the air means that... Just because politicians would use that as a scapegoat thing to just say that this is uh, climate change is bullshit. We shouldn't do it. I mean, the planet is warming, we have to do something. I mean, just because politicians would use that doesn't mean we can't do that. We have to do that. I mean, fuck, politicians will lie about anything. They will find anything anywhere. And they're lying already right now. They're already saying that, you know, there is no global warming. I mean, what's going to change? The oceans absorb more CO2, which makes them more acidic. This is already beginning to be deadly to huge ecosystems like coral reefs. And the longer this continues, the more severe the effects will be. But it gets worse. 
once we start pumping particles into the atmosphere on a massive scale, we might be forced to do so for a long time or we could risk a termination shock. What that means is that if humanity continues to enrich the atmosphere with CO2, but at the same time prevents the planet from heating up by blocking solar radiation, Seven. we're sitting on a time bomb. Yeah. Once we stop geoengineering, the natural cycle will take over again and Earth would heat up. But after a few decades of keeping the planet artificially cold while still releasing massive amounts of CO2, it would heat up much, much quicker. Yeah. An increase in temperature that would take 50 years today could happen in just 10 years. Such a temperature shock in such a short time would disrupt every major system on Earth so much that it would be impossible to adapt in time. The worst case scenario could be dramatic famines and the rapid destruction of ecosystems. Humanity might survive, but the survivors would inhabit an unfamiliar and hostile world. Yeah, but put a cap onto the carbon dioxide, I guess. We are still doing that right now. Why would we stop? I mean, basically, you know, force it. I mean, you know, <coughs> spread awareness of climate change, even to the people who are denying it. You know, make people aware, like, see, we did this. That is stopping the you know global warming. All the scientists, every single one of them, are telling that you know climate change is real. Uh, you know, spread awareness campaigns. I guess you know make people believe it. You know, make them understand things, and then you know tell them to I guess contact their uh, you know so basically uh, congressmen and people like that to tell them like yeah we believe in this and you better believe in too because you represent us something like that. Then politicians would have no. Uh, other chance to do that. I mean, you know, right now Republicans are uh, in the US, the Republicans are the one who's denying it. But there was a time uh, two, three decades ago while well, they were the one who's saying that global warming is a real thing, we have to do something about it. So, you know, if, if their base start to believe it, they'll believe it too. So, I mean, we, we have to stop carbon dioxide, but we also have to put something in the stratosphere to stop this. I and mean, yeah, it is true. If we put, uh, you know, sulfur like things in the stratosphere and then suddenly we stop and already carbon dioxide was rising, that would be sudden shock. I mean, suddenly the heat would rise up and that's really bad. The best case scenario is that once the world has finally fully understood the existential danger of rapid climate change, geoengineering can buy us a crucial decade or two. Time to transition our economies and maybe even pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. Maybe with technologies that we'll discuss in a future video. Conclusion. Geoengineering is a scary concept. It's not a solution to climate change, and it might even be a welcome excuse for the fossil fuel industry to delay the end of the fossil fuel age. Over the last few decades, geoengineering has been so controversial that it stopped many scientists from doing the experiments necessary to understand it better. But blankly opposing geoengineering is short-sighted. The sad truth is we are already running a geoengineering experiment. We're testing how fast the world changes if we add about 40 billion tons of CO2 each year. This experiment is about to get really exciting. Hopefully, we'll never have to use geoengineering. But I think this is a similar thing happened to the guy who was, who was I guess, a singular guy who saw the issue with the lead. How lead was affecting everybody and everywhere there was lead. And the, obviously, the gasoline companies and lots of other companies like major industry deliberately opposed him because apparently he was doing something that would hurt them i mean it really pisses me off when industries realize that what they're doing is actually hurting people in at the major scale and they still don't care they still try to suppress people who are showing that off rather than trying to prevent it somehow and change their product so it doesn't hurt, hurt people because harming people for profit at certain extent even i can understand that but at the major scale what's wrong with you so, you know, I remember that instant where a, lad, a guy saw that and was just telling everybody how lead is bad while these industries were basically hiring scientists, scientists to oppose these ideas and fight him in the Senate and it took a long time before people realized, oh, wait a minute, lead is actually bad. It, you know, it affects your brain and it's just worse and then people banned it. Same things happening with the climate change. People are opposing, you know, whoever people is actually trying to do experiments, getting suppressed. This is really bad, man. But if we need to in the future, we better have done the science. We better be prepared. Or a panicking humanity might accidentally press the self-destruct button. Yeah. You probably won't have to do any of that yourself. Yeah, last time there was a climate change video react from this channel, I said that, like, 
Uh, it's not that we're going to go extinct. It's not that humans will just uh, basically, uh, humans are so stupid that we would deny climate change even the moment we are burning up literally. That's not going to happen. There will be an end point like we really reach the end point. This is it. In a year or two, we will be screwed. At that point, p there will be panic. All the people who are denying it are suddenly going to be like, oh, this is an issue. And there will be drastic measures. They will stop people from producing carbon dioxide at all. Even if that means like, you know, I guess it, uh, ruining people's rights over certain things. And then majority of the world would not have some kind of, a, I guess, uh, you know, any uh, fossil fuels or anything like that. Most of the world will live in less electricity because our electric or our electricity generated majority of that is from the fossil fuel. And there will be immediate issue if we don't act right now. There will be immediate point like, okay, we have to do right now and we don't have anything in place. They would do something. Oh, okay, screw it. Just like how lockdown happened last year, it would be a, it, that equivalent of lockdown. Suddenly, everywhere else, like, okay, let's tax it. Let's put a, you know, I guess, meter on it. So electricity would go, electricity price would go off the roof. Majority of people would not be able to afford that. Most of the world would stay in darkness, even if that means chaos, because there's no other option. That's what would happen. At the end point, all the people who are denying it suddenly, oh, this is an issue, suddenly, and that's it. Everybody will panic. There will be sudden stop of things. That's just bad, man. It's better to act now than wait for that moment. But who knows? Better brush up on your science knowledge just in case. And our friends at Brilliant can help you with that. Yeah, people. Go to brilliant.org for us. Not to support this channel. This is a great video. Then ch this channel is great. All right, people. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the videos I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards or the playlist. Check out the end cards. And I'll see you next time.